Hello, welcome to Dream Again Africa. Thank you for joining us. We're excited to be back here today, especially because we have Professor Harry Bester, who is an entrepreneur, a chartered accountant, an auditor, a singer, and a director of PHF Incorporated. What a pleasure to have you on the show today. Welcome, Professor. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here. Wow. You have done so much in the last 25, 21 years. Yes. <laughs> I must say 25. Uh, you've done so much. We are inspired uh, by the work that you are doing uh, in the marketplace. Let's talk about financial management. I think it's, um, I think it's, a, it's an aspect of, of business that the world contradicts to what the Word of God says. And I think it's important mm. to understand the difference in wanting to do things and rebuilding um, a company, rebuilding nations, um, because there's only one way to do that, and that's the principles that God gives us in his word. How does one implement that in a space that has been operating in a worldly system for so long? I think there are many things in the world that draws us away because there are certain rules that apply to, um, to the world, and then there are certain things that God teaches us, and it's... It's strange if we want to further in our careers how we will take a book and we will knowledge us to get all the knowledge and we will learn, we will go on courses. But mm. when it comes to the word of God that has the basic principles of business, the foundation of business, we move away. And that's why the prophet Hosea says, due to a lack of knowledge, my people perish. And it's also applicable in the business world. That's why it happens because we hear things like... Um, Business is business. So we do things our own way in a self-righteous way. And then we just think we can just get away with it at the end of the day by saying, hey, it's no, nothing personal. Business is business. And then we did not apply the word of mm. God. And then that leads to, um, mm. to, to, to repercussions that I have to face in my business. And we don't always realize the seed that we sow sure. in our business. And that word, uh, as you say, is a foundation of everything because God said in the beginning yes. was the word. The yes. word was God and the word was with God. It's almost like it's something that never comes up around the table. It's almost yes. like the boardroom and the word. Yes. That, pff, what are you talking about? Yes. We grow up in a world where it says, don't mix God and business. Leave that to um, church yes. on Sunday. And and. All it's teaching the children of God or the people is that to, to apply a, a concept of the mixed seed in my, in my own life because from Monday to Friday I sow this seed, on Sunday I sow another seed and at the end of the day God calls it lukewarmness and he says he will spew it from his mouth because he's not interested in that. Um, if you want to run a business God's way, you cannot separate the two. You cannot separate God and business. It has to be one because he gives us all the principles in his word. So it's not a, a, a mind thing, it's a spirit-led thing. Yes, it is a, it is a spirit-led thing because the word of God says in Haggai 2 verse 8 to 9, it says, mm. all the silver, all the gold belongs to God. So we have to realize that we are merely stewards of what is his anyway. And that changes your whole mindset on financial management and managing your personal finance. Because if you look at even something like tithing, if you realize that everything, all the gold and silver belongs to God, we think we bless God by giving our tithe. But how can I bless you if I take your cell phone and I give it back to you and I say, I want to bless you with mm. a cell phone. You're going to say, hey, it's <laughs> always belonged to me. Um, so if we realize that we are not mm. blessing God by mm. giving 10%, he blesses mm. us by giving us 90% of what belongs to him anyway. And he requires us to act in obedience, to sow back into his kingdom. And that builds the spreading of the word and the gospel. And that gives us a total different mindset to managing finances because it never belongs to us. Talking about managing finance, you said one must be a steward. And the owner of the business, the entrepreneur, is the master steward. Yes. At the end of the day, the decision maker, the one who holds yes. the power. In a business where the head is not necessarily led, by someone like that, how should those who, who report to that person operate in the midst of having to honor the authority that is above them and at the same time implementing God's word? What is your advice? 
I think um, the Word of God teaches us firstly that there's, it's one thing to equip yourself with skills and talents, the talents that God's given you, but to use your skill and talents without knowing your identity in Christ is a cancer to management. Because, mm. I mean, then I form small carries instead of forming God-fearing people um, uh, that, that, that work in a business. And then the Word of God teaches us that everything I do, I must do as if I'm doing it unto Him. So many people say to me, yes, but you don't know my boss. You don't know the person I work for. They, they are not God-fearing people. They, they don't use godly principles. And then I say, but the word of God says that whatever you do, you have to do as if doing it unto God. So um, mm. what if God was your boss? How would you do it? Because mm. then we start, if we don't have that mindset, then we start saying, but my boss does not deserve my best. He does not deserve all my time. And then I start actually stealing time because I do personal things in work hours. I do this because I come from a place that they don't deserve it because they're not God-fearing. And that's against the Word of God because the Word of God says, whatever you do, you do as if you're doing it unto God. So if we have that picture, then we always operate in excellence because God gave His very best to us. And then we work. And then the people, even our boss, sees the fruit in our lives. And that is the seed that we plant for them to change. What would be your advice then in situations where what the manager is wanting people to do conflicts the Word of God? I, I think it's important to understand that, that we as children of God have to minister to the needs of people, not the wants of people. Because the moment I move to becoming a people pleaser, then I'm, uh, I, I'm basically binding myself to the system of the world, the business system of the world. So I think by acting in integrity, by walking in integrity and proper business ethics, your boss, the people that manage you will see that. And I think then you'll have the open door because God opens doors for you to speak to them and to say, listen, mm -hmm. um, this is not the way to do things. And if we then explain that the Word of God teaches us, that's where the blessings come from. Mm. Because the Word of God says blessings come mm. from obedience to His Word. Um, if we understand that, then we can continue in a way. And I think then the unity can, can form inside a company. I'm finding that I'm struggling to move from this point, uh, that you have to, this, this issue right now, because the whole setup of the African continent is, uh, is full of workers who are working uh, in organizations, while some of them, in fact, most of them have got the mantle for entrepreneurship, but for survival and issues of raising capital, which limits what they do. So I want to find out, would you then say that it's important for one to have clarity about their destiny and to take decisions to not live in an environment that is mixed and looked warm. Yes. I think the importance is within the foundation of good business principles are the, is the integrity and the ethics that God's definition thereof, not what the world says, because we hear things in, the, in, in, in companies, we hear things in the marketing environment, we hear things like... Um, we, we, they do marketing campaigns and then they, they dress up girls in very skimpy costumes and then they say, but that's what the market wants. And they actually have a saying that says, sex it's, sells. Yeah. Um, and then we, we, we want to sell our, our things, our products in an immoral way, but we expect the God of all moral to bless us. And mm. that can't happen because we put our moral values like uh, as a sacrifice to the God of Mammon, uh, mm. but we expect God to bless our business. And if we, if we understand that integrity and ethics, if we look at the word of God and we look at the definition thereof, mm. it says, um, the, 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 the word of God was originally given in Hebrew, so he draws pictures. So it, it says the word for integrity and ethics is the word tamam, which comes from tam, which actually means, and listen to this, how beautiful mm. this picture is. It says to walk a road of moral purity, mm. to walk in an innocence and a, a, a simplicity at mind, your yes being your yes, your no oh, being your no. no, and that will become a road of a good harvest and prosperity. 
That's the very definition of integrity in the word of God. So if we do that, then God leads us to that decision and he builds um, us to that. He, he raises us up in that place to where when he calls us to, like you say, start our own business as entrepreneur, mm. we will recognize his voice and we will go and our trust is in him and not in the mm. systems, the business systems of the world or even the banking systems, mm. but the provision of God. Does that mean... Um, when one, for example, is, con is, is, is confronted with those challenging decisions, especially in terms of taking contracts, let's look at what the entrepreneurs currently face with, for example, that they would want to take a contract, but there is moral values which, com which directly conflict what uh, the spirit led. Now, those are times to say, I know I'm not guaranteed to pay my bills this month, but I'm not taking this contract. I think it's important because the world takes us to a place where, you know, I, I, I give you a contract, but my hand is open on this side. And the word of God says in Deuteronomy mm. 16, 19, he says, um, you will not, do not take bribes because, he says, bribes close the eyes of the wise and it twists the words of the innocents. So, uh, you in, have in, to say that again. Uh, it says that, if I take bribes, it mm. closes the eyes of the wise mm. and it twists the words of the innocent. In mm. other words, by taking this, I have to start twisting my words um, Ooh, to, 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 uh, to basically um, to, to explain myself in a way that, that justifies myself in my own righteousness. And that's contradictory to the word of God. So sometimes we have to, the world expects us to do that in order to obtain a contract. Otherwise, it just says, I'll give the contract to somebody else and in that place that's where God says where are my children that will rise mm. in that pure morals and say listen I am not paying this and I have many testimonies about um, deals that I have been involved in where mm. people expected that and then I refuse to take it and then God gives me something 10 times bigger the next day because of the fact that I said no and I'm not going to lie to you, it was very tempting um, because yo, it's, it's, it's a big, so maybe I can twist my words and, mm. um, uh, and, and feel good about it but the word of God is black and white. It says this is right and this is the way we do things. So if we rise in that, um, we will build a generation from the young people that will change the, the economy of, of our land and of Africa. On financial systems, uh, let's help the entrepreneurs when they select the financial systems that must be implemented in a business to operate effectively and efficiently. I think if we look at the service industry, there are three pillars that the Word of God teaches us. And the first thing we spoke about, that's the foundation, is the, 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 the integrity and the ethics of your business. Okay. That's a decision that you need to make. And then you have the mentoring side because in the service industry that's what you sell you sell the skills of the people so mentoring mm. transferring of that knowledge to a younger generation is mm. is so important in, in in the way that you're building your business and then obviously time management because hours are what you sell and they all come together again on the they stand on the foundation of integrity because if I spend four hours on a client's work am I going to bill him for six mm -hmm. um, because yeah. I, 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 I used my own time for something else um, and that is, that is the, the, the pillars of the service industry which entrepreneurs need to understand. I need to understand mentorship, I need to understand time management and I need to understand what the Word of God teaches about this and if I have these things in place mm -hmm. then I know who I am I know what I'm selling and I know who I'm selling. Um, and, and, and in that place, we, uh, the, the business can go forward and prosper. Talk about time um, uh, and the billing because that very same matter of billing it, it causes a lot of conflict and uh, challenges in the business in terms of how to go, how much you are supposed to actually charge versus how much you have actually put in. Yes. So talk about overcharging. 
Yes, I think it comes down to the same thing that we spoke about earlier. I think it, 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 it boils down to what does the Word of God teach you? And mm. if you walk, because we tend to look at the material side and be very short-sighted, um, and that is to our own expense instead of investing, because investment is not always a monetary thing. Investment, the return on an investment mm. is very um, many times it's the it's the decisions that I make that I get a return in the kingdom of God because the word of God says um, do not collect things on earth that moth and rust can deteriorate but um, go to that place where you build um, in the kingdom of God and if we do that then our return is from him and the fruit of that return will also be prosperity in my business. Speaking about that fruit um, of the, uh, and the return I'm finding that there's a lot of hold in business going forward because of the inavailability of cash. Um, people want, expect to deliver, uh, services to be delivered to them, uh, to be delivered at a certain price. And, but sometimes they don't always have that cash up front. And I've just been observing the power of sometimes availing yourself as an entrepreneur to invest that time to give those services without a price. We do advise what or how to identify the situation where you have to say, no, I'm not able to do this, or situation where you can identify, hmm, I feel the Lord is leading me to invest yes. in this. I think it's important to be able to understand and to hear the voice of God when he guides you because the word of God says in Isaiah 30, it says, when you don't know what road to take, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way you need to go. So I think it's important because there are people that abuse the system. They, they deliberately engage your service with the initial intention never to pay you. And that you also need to identify mm. because that is fraudulent in the, in the eyes of God. And there you cut it off and you say, listen, I'm not interested in doing this. But then sometimes God says to you, but wait, Harry, yeah. you need to invest in this because mm. there's going to be a much bigger return, not necessarily in money, um, mm. but there's going to be a bigger return. And we have to be obedient because at the end of the day, we have to realize, come back to the principle that everything belongs to him. And I heard a amazing story of a rabbi. Now, rabbi is just the Hebrew word of a teacher that one day said, if you look through a window, you can see the people on the outside. If you stand in your house and you look through the window, you see the people in need. Because if a beggar walks past, you can see a hungry person because mm. you can look through the window. The moment you paint that window with a layer of silver, it becomes a mirror. And when you look in a mirror, all you see is yourself. So if your focus is only money, then you will see everything that you put the silver and gold lining. You'll come to a point where you will only be able to see yourself and your own needs. You won't be able to see the needs of others. And it's important to understand that it, it, it never belonged to me. I'm merely the steward of PHF Incorporated, which belongs to God. And he says, if he can trust me with a small, he will trust mm -hmm. me with the big things. Mm -hmm. So the more I grow it, because it's not mine. So if he says, listen, give it to that person or invest in that person, I'm not sacrificing, it's his anyway. So I'm being obedient to what he guides and then he gives the return on that or he expands on that and that builds businesses that can change cultures and change nations. Sure. It boils down to listening and hearing the voice of the Lord. And the reason why I'm asking this situation, I've also came across an opportunity where I sensed the Lord leading me to give my services to the people. And two weeks later, the referral came that gave a bigger opportunity. So as a, as a children of God, the power of the Holy Spirit is uh, evident in business today as we hear him. In the last 21 years of being in business, what are your biggest takeouts or biggest learnings as an entrepreneur? I think um, the, the biggest, the, the, the most important things that I've learned is to, to have a heart that 
builds businesses or advises, mentors business people to expand their businesses to the glory of God. Because the moment that happens, the focus moves away from you. And I've learned that the moment that you are inwardly focused, and then you start walking in self-righteousness, you start um, protecting your own, and you lose sight of what God wants you to do in your business, because the contribution that you can make to businesses starts deteriorating, because the only thing you're doing is building for yourself, and building Building in your own. Entrepreneurs at times feel justified to do so on the basis of what they feel they invested in businesses. I think um, the, one of the <laughs> one of the big challenges is um, a, a, a lot of people say that yes, but I work hard for my money. I've worked for this. Then the word of God says, but I'm the one that I'm the source. I've given you the ability to work. So if it was not for that ability, you would be able to do nothing. So it comes back to him again, him being the source of everything anyway. And the biggest, I think the biggest danger for entrepreneurs is it's a cash industry. So it relies even more heavily on ethics and integrity to say, Lord, I will not, um, because if cash is involved, um, a lot of things happen. We say things like, um, I've even heard the saying, cash is king. I don't know, my word says Jesus is king. Mm. Um, it says yeah. money talks. We've given money um, an, an unhealthy authority. We've given money a voice, um, an unhealthy voice. The word of God says his word is the living word. His word guides us. Um, and at the end of the day, if you read Revelation 13, it says that this very voice that we've given money will be when it speaks about the mark of the beast, it says that people will take it or they will not be able to buy or sell. So this very voice and unhealthy authority that we've given money is what will bind at the very end. Yo, the business environment says cash is king, but the word of God says Jesus is our king. He is our leader and he is the one who has the highest authority. There is just so much more here, but let's see you after the break. Welcome back and thank you for joining us. Prof, just before you go, anything you would like to say to our viewers? I think it's important to realize that um, that we serve the God of the impossible. We mm. serve a God that can do anything. So it doesn't matter where you are at the moment. Um, maybe sometimes we think that we're in a position where we're never going to make this work, but it was never asked us of us to make it work. Obedience is asked of us. And then God breathes into a situation. So um, just trust God for what he's called us to do because we all have an amazing purpose in him. Yeah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. Let's yes. pray. Thank you, Abba Father, that we can come in your name and thank you that I can pray for everybody watching this, Lord, right around the country and Africa, the world, Lord. May we realize that our foundation must be in you, Lord, and that everything belongs to you anyway and thank you lord that we can come and pray that you the god that breaks the chains you the god that frees lord and you the god of um of sound business foundation, Lord, if we walk in obedience to you. So may we learn to listen to your voice, Lord, to hear your heartbeat, and may we walk in obedience yes, with Lord. you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> wow. Thank you for joining us. Join us again. We must continue with financial management. There is just so much wealth and so much wisdom oozing out of him thank you for joining us this week don't go away see us next week right here on dream again africa goodbye